Hey there everybody, it's Ben here, and today we're going to power a solar inverter using something other than solar. Right here we have a SolarCity H6 hybrid inverter. It'll do on-grid, off-grid, grid tie, a very flexible system. But what I really want to try doing with it is to power it directly from my electric car. So to do that, I want to do some experiments to make sure I'm doing things right before I actually attempt that. Let's take a look at the specs. We can actually see two things going on here. One is it's got some information for the photovoltaic inputs. It also has information for a DC battery, but unfortunately this was designed to work with just one particular battery, an early version of the Tesla Powerwall, uh, and there's some communications and other issues, so we are not able to use this battery input. But if we look up here, DC input voltage for the solar has a maximum of 570 volts and a range of 85 to 550 volts in uh, for our, our tip, typical operating range. Um, and what's interesting about that is most electric cars uh, have a battery voltage of like around 360 volts. So in theory, we should be able to connect an electric car battery pack to this. I don't want to try that yet without doing some testing first. So let's run uh, some lower voltage DC in here to start. Um, let's say about 150 volts. So here I have a Meanwell power supply, or rather three of them. Uh, these are Meanwell HLG 320H 48A power supplies. Uh, basically they output uh, 48 volts nominal, at up to 6.7 amps, uh, which makes about 320 watts or so. But since I have three of them connected here in series, it's going to increase that output voltage. So basically about 150 volts times three, but it's still gonna be no more than that 6.7 amps. Now, uh, I would definitely not suggest doing this with any power supplies other than these when I did this. Uh, it was known that that was something that you can do with these power supplies. You can connect them together in series and they work just fine like that. Over here is the power input end. I just have those all connected together. So they all just go to one regular Edison wall plug here. And then on the output end, they're all connected together, going to just a single uh, Anderson quick disconnect right here. So let's just plug it in, take a look at the voltage. So with my voltmeter set to measure DC voltage, it's connected to the output of these power supplies, and I'm just gonna plug it into wall power. They take just a moment to power on, and make sure I have a good connection here. 149.7 volts. I think we're okay with rounding that to 150. 150 volts DC. So now let's take a quick look inside the inverter. So if we start on the left, we can see right here is our photovoltaic input. I've got a pair of wires running to that. Over here we've got that battery input, nothing connected there, but coming in to the battery input up to the rest of the system, it does immediately go through some fuses. We've got some very fast blow, um, what they call semiconductor fuses right up here, but that's only on the battery side, not on the photovoltaic side. Uh, over here, it comes in, it goes through a DC disconnect, and then just straight to the rest of the inverter. So I think that's gonna be one thing that I wanna change is to add uh, fusing in line in here because uh, when we have my car connected, you know, potentially a battery can make a tremendous amount of current and if something goes wrong like a short circuit, you certainly want to have uh, a fuse in line to blow and protect everything. Over on the right hand side, this is the AC uh, part of the system and right here we've got a couple of wires it's our hot hot neutral and ground those are the four wires that you use in a typical uh, US split phase system and coming off of one hot and the neutral I just wired up a simple just electric outlet just plug in your typical loads uh, I also uh, just ran this red wire as the uh, second hot 
out and I capped it, but that'll let me test the 240 volt output as well. Uh, and then if this was hooked up in a grid tie sort of a system, um, your wall power would be brought in over here, but we're not doing this. This is completely freestanding right now. And even though this is just a temporary setup for testing, um, anywhere wires are going through, I do have proper strain relief or at least a nice rubber grommet uh, to protect the wires. So up here I've got an external fuse holder, pair of fuses in it, uh, very fast acting, and one of them is a very low current fuse, just because I'm doing some testing here. Now the other thing I want to try here is a pre-charge circuit. Now just using this power supply, I don't think it should be necessary, but when I do my big battery it will be, so I'm going to do it anyways right now. Um, essentially a pre-charge circuit is just a way to slow down current um, going into something like a motor controller or an inverter so that when it first connects um, there is an arcing. Uh, the capacitors have the ability to suck in current like crazy very very quickly can uh, do some bad things. So in this case what we're gonna do is I've got a light bulb right here. This uh, I think it was a 40 watt. It's not really well marked but I put my multimeter on just the bulb and I measured the resistance. It was at 24 ohms which actually seems uh, about appropriate for this right now. I did run a little math with the 150 volts and the 24 ohms, um, and it did seem appropriate. Um, so back here, we've got um, just a little device, a small contactor. Um, so what's happening is we're gonna have, we'll hook up power uh, through our Anderson connection here. That's gonna come up through the light bulb, which is going to add resistance. You know, it's going to slow the current. It's going to come back here through the fuse to the system, back through the other fuse, da 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 da, complete the circuit. And then, so what's going to happen is for just a moment, uh, the system's going to be sucking power through this. So we're going to see this light bulb glow. It's just going to light up right as that uh, initial surge current is going in to the capacitors. Um, after that, the light bulb isn't needed anymore. So what I'm gonna do is on this contactor, I'm just gonna give it 12 volts of power through here from my, I got a bench power supply. Unfortunately, the fan on that's a little noisy, but um, when I hit this, uh, power is going to bypass the bulb and it's just gonna go straight from our power supplies to our inverter. So when I'm ready to start, all I have to do is turn on power to the power supply. And it's gonna be providing 12 volts over these two wires up to that contactor. And I think we're ready to try this out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just plug in my power supply to our connector here. So that's gonna connect our 150 volts out to the inverter. So now I'll plug in my Meanwell power supplies. It takes just a moment for it to turn on. We should see a surge of power going through here, just lighting up the light bulb for a moment. Then once that's done, I'll just reach over here, turn on the 12 volt power supply to bypass the light bulb. And assuming everything goes well, our solar inverter should light up. We should be able to get through to the menu and start working with it. So here we go. Okay, and it is working. Let's uh, see what we can see. We're at uh, system overview. Let's go into that. Uh, it's set to a automatic mode. And that automatic mode is off grid. Of course, I am not connected to a, an AC output, so that makes sense. And off grid mode is what I'm gonna want anyways uh, in my, my final setup. Um, looks like there are some numbers in here. This is a used unit. It uh, recalls some uh, energy production. Looks like uh, 1.7 megawatt hours have been run through here.
uh, we're outputting 124 volts um, at no current. We're not out. There's uh, nothing being drawn out on the AC side. Uh, frequency on the AC side: 59.72 volts. Uh, 150 volts DC in on the PV input. Battery voltage, zero, because uh, you know what? There's no uh, battery connected to here. Huh, battery not present, that's pretty obvious. Uh, date and time are not correct, I'll have to change those. This is the H6 model. So, let's see if we can get out of here. We can also shut off the system, clear faults. Um, if I want to go into grid settings, uh, that's where I need a password to get in. I do have the password. Don't recall what it is right now, but there's nothing uh, too interesting in there for us at the moment anyways. Um, let's see. It tells what software we're using. Uh, let's turn on the backlight, just because it'll make this all easier for us to read. So it is all working. Uh, operation is flashing. That alarm warning, I think, is mostly just the fact that it's missing the battery. So let's see if we can get some power out of this thing. Now I've got this electric outlet connected to the output of the AC connection. Um, let's take our voltmeter. We'll... Uh, put the probes in here, test what our voltage is, and right now we're in the AC bypass mode, so it should be taking power in from the wall, but that's not connected, which means this is off. There's no power to it. We'll flip it, the AC to the inverter mode. So now we're going off the AC power the inverter is making, and we're at 123.8 volts, and all these are the same uh, 120 volt style setup. Uh, but if I want to test the 240 volt, I do have that other hot wire and I can move from the ground, or uh, the neutral rather, and connect to that and that should give us from one hot to the other hot, 247.6 volts. Uh, so this is our split phase output. We can output 120 and 240 volts both at the same time, which is a very cool feature. Uh, not all inverters do that. A lot of the European ones will do uh, 240 volt only, or sometimes you have 120 volt only. So being able to do a split phase output from this is pretty nice. Now let's see about actually running something. Uh, down here, I have uh, a trouble lamp. Uh, it's just your typical 120 volt cord. And this has in here a 100 watt light bulb. Um, that's about the heaviest load I'm gonna be able to do with that one amp fuse that I've got in there. Um, but let's just plug this in. And bam, that works, that works just fine. And actually now, if I go up through the menu here um, and I check the output current, uh, it does show me uh, how much current is coming out to here. Uh, so pretty basic load, but it runs it just fine. Uh, we're, you know, the system isn't airing out or anything. Works just, just the way it's supposed to. Now in terms of shutting this down, uh, what I would do is I would turn off any uh, AC loads right away. Uh, now right here we kind of have the output represented just by, you know, the single electric box. Um, normally the output would actually be going to a breaker panel. So what I could do, for example, is uh, just kill all the uh, AC at that breaker panel um, and then without any AC load on the inverter, it's not going to be drawing um, any current or hardly any current, you know, there's some overhead just from running everything, but it would be drawing hardly any current on the DC side, because remember DC, it's hard to break, especially at higher voltages. So we just want to make it so that the inverter isn't drawing, and then at that point we can kill our DC power supply. In this case, all I have to do is unplug the AC cord to those uh, meanwhile power supplies. Um, if it was in my car, um, I just have a switch which would um, turn off the power, essentially. Um, and then we've also got our DC disconnect here as well. 
So right now the inverter is working um, exactly the way that I had hoped. Uh, I think the next steps here are going to be um, maybe just running the 150 volt power supply into the inverter and leaving it run for uh, an extended period of, period of time. Uh, maybe I just have it powered on running a light bulb or something um, all day while I'm working in my garage so that it's not left unattended, but I can make sure that nothing weird happens after it's running for some certain amount of time. Uh, after that, I think what I would do is hook it up to a 150 volt battery, uh, just because I have a 150 volt battery. Uh, I was using this as a power supply for charging my electric motorcycle. Uh, again, that already has that Anderson quick disconnect already on the motorcycle. So I'd be able to connect a 150 volt motorcycle battery pack with Nissan Leaf cells up to the inverter. Now, the other thing we don't want to overlook is that 150 volts is within the operating range of the PV input of the inverter, but it's not within the MPPT range of the inverter. And inverters, they have different ways of figuring out where that um, maximum power point uh, point is. So we need to make sure that that doesn't cause any issues with batteries. For example, that it wants to short circuit the two connections because with solar panels you can do that and with batteries you cannot. Uh, so what I might have to do is maybe I take my uh, motorcycle battery pack and I add a couple more batteries in series to get up over that 200 volts uh, for testing to make sure that nothing happens with the MPPT feature of this inverter. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. I hope you find this interesting and that you want to find out what happens next along with me. Uh, so until next time, please like, comment, subscribe, uh, absolutely share this with your friends. We're getting pretty close to a uh, 100,000 subscribers on this YouTube channel, which uh, personally I'm really excited about that. I'm just literally some guy in my garage working on videos like these and uh, to get 100,000 subscribers would uh, be really exciting, be a real uh, landmark for me. So uh, until next time, Stay charged up.